the path to wonderland, the sky, the world of blue. It's wonderful, it's marvelous, the life is good to you. The trees along the road, we all will go on our way. The sun's a golden castle, and the air's a rare bouquet. Draw la 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 My wagon is a chariot, my horse a noble steed. We'll take you where your rainbow and go there, your friend indeed. We'll storm the castle gates today until they let us in. What joy to be when royally we watch the fun begin. Voila! <laughs> Coming over to help you move in, huh? No. I'm surprising him. I'm surprising all of them. They have no idea what I'm up to this week. Well, us Lincoln folks kind of figured you'd get engaged to, well, you know who. I wonder what Tom looks like. I haven't seen him in three years. Might be right smart business for you to hook into a rich family like young Tom Shaw. I'm not looking for wealth, Mr. Brown. I have other plans. Such as? Their secrets. Oh, well, don't mind me, Miss Polly. But you're pretty spunky. And a girl can't afford to be too uppity these days. Uppity? Yeah. You know, independent. I uh, hope you ain't aiming to turn him down when he proposes to you. If he proposes. Huh? Oh. <clears throat> he did. with the baggage. Uh oh. You'd better stay where you are and mind your manners. You're in a big city now that's full of pitfalls. How do you mean, Mr. Brown? I mean slick fellas that are anxious to help out a pretty girl. And they'll ask you if they haven't met you someplace before. Oh? You've got to learn to resist temper and resist it strong. But if I resist it too strong, it might never come back again. Yes. Well, well, in that case, just stay in the cart. Thank you very much, gentlemen, but I'll handle this. Thank you. I uh, beg your pardon, Miss... I know. You'd like to help me. <laughs> well, yes, you see, I thought that but perhaps... you've seen me somewhere before. Well, as a matter of fact, there is I something... I thought that... so. I resist men like you. Oh! Mr. Sidney! Why, it's Polly Milton. But you... you've grown up. Why, yes, I guess I have. Polly, Miss Mills. Oh, my dear, and you made it. Oh, isn't it wonderful? How was your trip, and how was your mother, and how are you? Oh, it was fine, and she's fine, and I'm fine. And how are you, Miss Mills? Oh, fine, fine, I'm fine. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Sidney. I used to know him when I was little. How are you, Mr. Sidney? Well, I think I can say that I'm, uh, <laughs> fine, fine. Your room is all ready for you, Polly. That's exactly what I was talking about. Polly, it's real nice of you to visit the George your first evening. You know something? I can't wait to see Tom. Oh? I remember when he used to catch... Um, Mrs. Shaw didn't mention... I mean, she didn't write you... About staying with him again? Oh, yes. In fact, they expect me. But I just couldn't write and refuse them. It looks so ungrateful on paper. 
Handsome cab, you know. I'll see if it's here. wait for Polly to arrive. I wonder if she'll look as juvenile as usual. Where is the afternoon paper? Where is the ledger? Oh, here it is, Father. Thank you, son. Everyone knows the customs of this household. Anyone is welcome to the ledger after I've read it. And in my chair. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. Thank you, Francis. I understand Polly is setting a cap for some young country minister. Ministers run in the Milton family. Betty Sanders insists she's going to marry a doctor, so she gets for nothing. But if Polly marries a minister, she can be good for nothing. Maud! It'll be nice having Polly as a guest again. I need someone to help with my sewing circle and with my coiffures. I'll help her, of course, to get a Boston husband. Well, you can't even get yourself one. Thomas, that last remark of yours was strictly uncalled. Pardon. Mademoiselle Minton is here. Well, Jeanette, show her in, show her in. Good evening. Well, good evening. Holly, well, nice so to welcome. see you, Polly. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome back, Polly. You're late. You must be tired. Your room is ready for you. Francis will take you upstairs while Jeanette gets you some supper. Uh, if she can get cook away from that newfangled hot water heater. It's only the second one in the whole of Commonwealth Avenue. It's connected up with the oven. You can have hot water in five minutes for your bath. As long as cook has a leg of, I mean, a leg of lamb in the oven. I, I mean, the oven has to be hot. I, I, I mean... That will do, Bord. Won't you have a seat, Polly, until your supper's ready? Well, uh, thank you very much. But first, I must tell you, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to stay with you this winter. You're, you're not? Did someone else invite you? No, I, I've moved rooming house. Oh, no. Rooming house? Well, whatever for? I'm sure Polly will tell us if we give her an opportunity. I'm going to give singing lessons. You mean you're going to work for a living? But just earn some money. There isn't enough at home, and Will's going to college this fall. It was Father's wish. Ned's not ready to help yet, so I'm going to work. Oh, but what will Commonwealth Avenue say of our cousin, even a distant cousin, living in a rooming house with women musicians and women painters? I don't care what people say. I've got six dollars saved up, and I'm going to take lessons. May I, Mother? Somebody has to start Polly off. And you know my voice needs training. Well, well, of course. Yes, of course, we could all help. We could all take lessons. Not you. Why not? Make it the thing to do. Why, you'd be swamped with pupils. Now, can we end this discussion? You know how issues always affect my liver. Maud. Get my Shetland shawl. Francis, get the pillow for my back. Here you are, my dear. Here are your smelling salts. Thank you. You see, Polly, your Aunt Anastasia hasn't changed a bit. I'll see you after supper. I think Mother's made an excellent suggestion, Polly, and I'll use my influence, too, which I might say is quite considerable. Well, thank you, Tom. But the Davenports and the Grays and the Crosses have already promised to send me their children. The Davenports? How did you ever get the Davenports? When she came to Lincoln last summer. That gave her the idea that I'd come to Boston and teach some of her friends. Well, I think it's a splendid idea. And you must come to my first holiday dance and meet all the girls again. Oh, yes, and Trix. Trix? I don't think I remember. Oh, yes, Trix Parker. She and Tom are engaged, you know. Tom is engaged? Since last June. They're lovely people. The Pinkney Street Parkers. They're in shoes. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. It, it must be wonderful to, to be in shoes. <laughs> now remember, breathe with your diaphragm, not with your chest. <laughs> I guess that's all for today, Susan. You're improving. 
You've done so much with Susan's voice. Will she be able to sing a real song soon? Very soon. I was thinking of giving her one by Franz Schubert. He's quite popular. Popular? Well, before you teach it to her, could I hear it, please? Of course. Here's the last part of it. There's a happy book I follow through sun and shady dell. It dances down the hollow to cast its magic spell, magic spell, magic spell. Thank you very much. That was very beautiful, Miss Milton. And you may teach it to Susan. We'll see you next week. Fine. Ha, 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 ha. I'm remembering my diaphragm. That's right, dear. Oh, I almost forgot. You are. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. Cookie, Nicodemus. Come on. Come in. Thinking isn't enough, Polly. It's been three weeks, and we do only live a mile away. Well, uh, I've been very busy, you know. I know. But you can't teach day and night. It's something else, isn't it? Uh, would you like some tea? All right, I'll stop being nosy. And I will have some tea. Oh, how quaint. I had a very trying day at the milliner's. Why? I had no idea you'd be so comfortable here. Or so successful. Maud never stops talking about you. If she isn't my most gifted pupil, she's still my best. <laughs> Tom says she still screams, but now a little bit more on key. How is Tom? Tom? Well, he's all right. You know how he got engaged. Perry Stone dropped Trick for very good reasons, I hear, and Tom felt sorry for her. Sorry? <laughs> Lemon? No, thank you. I think he's a fool. What do you think? Well, I... I'm sorry, Polly. I'm probably boring you. Tom's a brother to you, and that's no thrill. Mark, these are the best cakes. Who's your caterer? Me. You. You made them? Oh, Polly, you do everything so well. I can't even roast an egg. Do you suppose that's why Mr. Sidney doesn't declare himself? Because you don't roast eggs? I'm sure it is. Francis, do you mean he's never? No, not one proposal. Oh, he calls, but he's so mysterious. He never tells me where he goes, or whom he sees, or what he does. <sighs> he can be so charming and so infuriating. He's been wonderful to me. Why, the day I arrived, he drove up, just by accident, of course, and helped Farmer Brown take all the things up to Marble. He did? Well, I didn't know about that. But really, Polly, I didn't come here to discuss Mr. Sidney with you. I've set the party date. A week from Saturday. I know you never go anywhere or see anyone, but if you're interested, Mr. Sidney will be there. Yes. I think I'd like to attend. Oh. Then you are coming? Yes, I'd like to. Very much. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for the tea. <laughs> Mademoiselle, you must sit still. 
Otherwise, I cannot create on your head this exquisite novelty from Paris. Oh, all right, Antoine. But please finish it before the party is over. Come in. Hello, Francis. Came up to see if I could help. Oh, yes, Polly. It's wonderful of you. Otherwise, Antoine will keep me here all night. Oh, you must look at my dress. I had it made at Madame Sylvia's. It's on the bed. It's beautiful material and so becoming, as you'll see when I put it on. Of course, I had to wear pink. You might not understand why, but I had to wear pink. You see, Trix thought I was going to wear green, so she got a blue dress and told Belle it would spoil the effect mine as we're so much together. Wasn't that too sweet of her? Well, Belle came and told me in time, so I got pink. Do hurry, Antoine. Tighter, Polly. One more pull. That's it. Oh. Oh. oh that's right, tired. Now for the dress. Oh, I'm so excited, I can hardly wait. Isn't it the bomb? Oh, yes. Beautiful. I wouldn't worry about heart breaking. I'd be worried about children. <laughs> Very interesting. My dear Francis, you look charming. I'm so happy you invited me. It's nice to have you here, James, and you too, Bill. This is Polly Milton, my relative in Lincoln. You remember her, of course. Oh, yes, I remember. That was in our childhood days, wasn't it? Oh, I think we'd better dance. Mm. You remember the sleigh ride, Bill? You and Tom and the rest of the crowd over on Prospect Hill? We had such fun. That was when you came up from the farm, wasn't it? Do you still live there? Why, yes. I like these new dances, don't you, Bill? I'm afraid I don't particularly care for modern music. Delighted to have seen you again. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, uh, may I? That's Polly. You remember, I told you about her. Oh, the girl who works. How amusing. And what's so amusing about it? This is 1870. It's high time women began thinking about taking their place in this world. They need a girl like Polly, a pacemaker. And what Polly needs is a dressmaker. I think giving singing lessons is a lot of fun. And I believe Polly gives the finest singing lessons in the city. I always had the notion that voice instruction was given by the finest artists abroad. Oh, while I think of it, I'm giving my first dance next week. Of course, I'll expect you all to be there. Mary Jane, Rodney, Bill, Emma, George, June, and you too, Rick. Bill, this is our dance, remember? Right. Well, what but about... I love modern music. I'm so glad they're playing it for us. It isn't you, Polly. It's the idea of working. Polly, would you mind helping me with the punch, please? Quite no. Young lady, may we have some punch? Of course. Polly, may I present Miss Parker, my fiance? Tricks my cousin, Miss Milton. Oh, Tom has been telling me how clever you are. He says you do everything. Play, sing, give vocal lessons, bake cakes. No doubt you do your own washing. Tricks. Pickle? Oh, I'm sorry, but the next four dances are taken. Francis, perhaps it's been delayed. Don't worry. Who, Mr. Siddons? Oh, if you think I'm waiting for him, you're greatly mistaken. Why, I only have four dances on reserve. Perhaps Polly and I can have this next dance while you're refreshing yourself, Trix. We've had seven dances already. Oh, I'd love to. I'm sure you would, but this is a waltz, darling, not a country square dance. But then, of course, you wouldn't know. I beg your pardon, Miss... Why, Miss Polly, I didn't know you for a moment. How are you? Since we're old friends, how about a little walk around the square? Might clear up that uh, headache. You must be chilly. You'd better wear this. Thank you. Perhaps the orchestra's responsible for your headache. Some of our music has become very loud. <laughs> or could it be these modern tunes? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, I teach the very latest. 
Like Stephen Foster. Ah, his songs are catching. So he drove up just by accident. Huh. Sometimes Francis puzzles me. They say we had an aunt who began that way. She was batty. You know, I was almost jealous of that country girl. Imagine, me jealous of that snow coach. Polly may be from the country, but she's still pretty smart. Oh, of course she is, dear. At least smart enough to know her place. No doubt that's why she left the party and went home. Oh, I'm not so sure. She's back and with Mr. Sidney. Well, Tom, perhaps now you'll have some time for your fiancé. Thomas. Trick? No, Polly. Cookie? No, thank you. I'll have one later, Maud. Thank you. Francis expected you earlier, Mr. Sidney. It's my fault, Mrs. Shaw. I met him at the door and we went for a walk. Did you? Francis had to go upstairs and lie down. You know, she's the delicate one in our family. She is? Gee, I always thought she was the most indelicate one. Maud! I mean, your sister had a very bad headache. They must be catching. Oh, she wouldn't catch one. Father was saying that she'll never catch anything. I've never said anything of the kind. A cookie? No! What I meant was, Miss Polly had a headache, too. I met her as she was leaving the party, so I proposed... Did you? I mean, I suggested a little stroll in the fresh air, and it cured her. With your permission. Beautiful dreamer. 
Right. Thank you all for a delightful evening. And you're singing, Miss Milton. What a surprise. Quite a surprise. Oh, I do hope Francis will feel better in the morning. And I must tell Mama about your voice, Polly. Good night. Night. Good night. Good night. I'm escorting Trix home, Father. It takes exactly 22 minutes to and from Trix's house. So see that you're back directly. Tom has an 8 o'clock class at the university in the morning. Who's well, who's us both to look after his education? Oh, I do, Mr. Shaw. But there is a lot of education one doesn't get in the university. Good night, Mr. and Mrs. Shaw. It's been a beautiful party. Oh, good night, Miss Milton. And you will let me know how much you charge to sing at social affairs? Thank you. Good night. If you don't mind, Mr. and Mrs. Shaw, I'll escort Miss Polly home. That will be very kind of you. Mm, on a steam omnibus, Mr. Sidney? Edward. Oh, I'm familiar with this young man's ideas. Iron steamships, 15-story buildings. I hope I never live to see the day. You will, sir. Many of them, I hope. Thank you both for a most delightful evening. I trust Francis will recover soon. I wish I could like that young man. He's conceit and he's... Crazy prognostications. Does he have to keep bobbing around here all the time? Now, Edward, don't get on stilts. Remember, you have a marriageable daughter. I do remember, but why does she have to marry Sidney? The fellow has no future, an impractical dreamer, a good-for-nothing. <laughs> yes, but a much more handsome good-for-nothing than you were when I married you, my dear. to get to my room. For a price, Mr. Classroom Joker. You know that 25 cents you owe me? Now it's 50. I know everything. And if I ain't pay it? I'll tell all I heard from Professor Schmidlap's daughter. And when father learns, your name is Pick Lily. Oh, Marty, okay, I'll pay it. But I haven't a penny on me. You'll have to trust me. No, and... I've trusted you before. March. You little weasel. March. And not a word from him since. Oh, I'm not blaming Mr. Sidney, but Polly, in her innocent way, has more charm than she realizes. I see exactly what's happened. The scene is a trouble. And it wouldn't be so bad if a word behind one's back. Tom, is there something the matter? Well, uh, well, not exactly, Mother. I, I have a feeling you're trying to conceal something. Maud, for heaven's sakes, what are you giggling about? Very funny. It's about Tom. Seventy-five cents. Tom had a torpedo on Professor Schmidlap's chair, and it exploded before Tom could get away. And it burnt that. What? And the dean is sending a letter here to father. The dean? This is serious. Oh, whatever will your father say when he gets that letter? It's on the hall table now, Mother. Do you suppose we might hide it? Well, I might take it? Well, that is, not say anything? Dissemble to your father? I never have. But it's... In the circumstances. Bonsoir, monsieur. Jeanette. Here is the mail, monsieur. Thank you. Good evening, sir. You're looking uncommonly well. Thank you. I... Oh, Edward, dear, I see you have the afternoon mail. What? We're here. I keep the ledger. I have to look at the financial reports. I'll be in the library. Whew. Well, a letter from Polly. Not one word of apology. It's an invitation for recital at the Mills place. Sounds horrifying. There's a happy fruit that follows to the sun and shady dell. It dances down the hollow to cast its magic spell. I want to ask it something. It only laughs at me. But murmured from its rocky bed is a song of mystery. Thank <laughs> you. 
friends are... Thank you, Tom. I've seen that. That's trick. Oh, sweet as ever, I guess. She is not. And her cheeks are too red and wears blue dress. I'm getting a stopper for you. If I can find one big enough. Polly, could I... Could I ask you something? Something important. Yes? This trick's pain. I mean, here. Oh. All the girls paint in part of these days. They darken their lashes with burnt hairpins, or take cologne on lumps of sugar, or brighten their eyes with belladonna. You don't say. Oh, but I do. Well, I'm positive you don't use any of that... that humbug. You see, I was right. What did I do now? Lovely girl. The shoulders are so expressive. Too bad, though. They seem to carry so many chips. If they do, it's no one's burden but my own. I was talking about the painting, naturally. It is quite a nice canvas. Yes, the canvas is the best part about it. Oh, now, don't act so superior. It's a sign one isn't sure of oneself. You should be the surest girl in the world. With those pretty eyes, cute little nose, and that nice little chin. <laughs> Does my face really need diagramming, Mr. Sidney? Your face doesn't need anything. Come on now, confess that most of the girls here really do commendable work. We could do just as commendable work in our sewing circle. Oh, right, I'll heartily admit that. Now, you admit that down in your heart, you honestly admire the girls. Now, for instance, is Polly Milton. Really, Mr. Sidney, I'm not in the least bit interested in any of them. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go find Tom and Maude. I still think her shoulders are pretty. Beautiful. But I really don't feel like going. I hear they're terrible gossips. Every sewing circle is. Just remember, Emma Davenport invited you. She's chairman now, not Francis. That's true. But the most important reason why you should go is for Jane. If you can get work, it'll mean everything. I'm sorry. I've just been selfish. Of course I'll go. That's more like it. Come, let's show her how beautiful you look. Hello, Jane. Hello, Polly. How do you feel? Much better. Well, here it is. Oh, Polly, the dress is beautiful on you. Thanks to your nimble fingers. I was glad I could do something for you. Your handsome is waiting, Polly. You'd better hurry along. I'll tell you all about it when I get back. Mm, it's pretty material. It must be wonderful to be invited to a tea party. Boston tea parties can sometimes be surprising. I'm so happy you could, Polly. You know all the girls, of course. Yes, I do. Good afternoon. Oh, Polly, this is Miss Perkins. She distributes our sewing work. How do you do, Miss Perkins? What kind of a dress would you start? I think I'd like to make an unbleached cotton shirt. Cotton? Yes. I always find I need five cotton shirts to one frock, don't you? Do you mean for my person? No. When I purchase a chemise, it is always silk. But uh, here you are if you want to work with cotton. Did you know that Joe Salton drank so much champagne at the Cross's party, they had to send him home with two servants? Well, you don't mean it. I have a little bone to pick with you, Trick. You didn't allow one of us to dance with Tom last night. Not even me, the hostess. I don't believe in taking chances, Belle, after what you did to Judith last year. interfere with our gossip. Not I. I'd have to engage an extra seamstress and the prices they charge. I if you don't mind, I have an idea. There's a girl, her name is Jane. All right, Trix. Do you know the last seamstress I hired charged me 50 cents a day? Imagine! Servants are so expensive and they're all alike. Well, if they'd spend their wages properly, we wouldn't mind. But when your cook gets a bonnet like yours and then wears it in front of you, what... 
We're working for charity. Personally, I think there's too much charity. If we wouldn't humor the poor, they'd look after themselves. But you're all wrong. There can't be enough charity. Well, I declare. I'm sorry, but I have to differ with you. And I'm sorry you're so nearsighted you have to use those funny spectacles. Well, I still say I'm very sorry, but well, as long as you say it, I won't disagree. Maybe you're just a sorry sort of person. You were, uh, you were saying you had an idea, Polly, about... Yes. It's about a girl named Jane Bryant. She couldn't make enough money to live decently. And she tried to do away with herself. She's a wonderful seamstress. She made this new dress I'm wearing. And she does need help. So I... Well, if the sewing circle could send some extra work to her. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Carried. Thank you, girl. You're so naive, Francis. If you have serious competition, make a friend of her, you see? No, I don't. While you win your man with whatever methods are expedient, you keep your friend harmless. Oh, precisely. By the by, I'm going to New York for a week. Would you like me to do some shopping for you? I hear there are some exquisite new models at A.T. Stewart's that you simply can't find anywhere. Oh, Tom. Tom, I have a surprise for you. Surprise? Yes, you're taking Polly and me to the opera Friday night. I am? I mean, I am? Well, where am I going to get the money? Well, this is my treat. You see, we've been mean to Polly, and I think we ought to make amends, and you're available, so... Oh, you sound too noble. Well, I kind of like to see Polly again. Who's going to escort you? Nobody. I want to have a nice, friendly evening with Polly, and having a man along with spoil it. Yes, having a man along... Say, wait a minute, I'm a man. Ha! Huh. There's a good answer to that. I'll think of tomorrow. my first opera. I'm so excited. An excellent vintage. But it tickles my nose. Well, that isn't the vintage, Polly. It's because of the bu <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think of the opera, Tom? Oh, I think opera's ridiculous. Not if you look at it romantically, as I do. I can't get used to people telling romantic secrets at the top of their lungs. That's because you have more common sense than a... Romance? Thank you. You know, I didn't mind it being silly. I really wanted to go backstage and comfort that broken-hearted girl. Well, that tenor was a jack not to see that she adored him. In real life, we men don't like that. Well, it seems that women are taught to hide their real feelings. Some women, but not Polly. Oh, but you don't know. Well, he's right. Imagine Polly walking about Paris with her back hair down, lamenting a dumb lover. <laughs> <laughs> no, she would let concealment prey on her damask cheek and still smile on, as I just read in the novel. Or she'd turn sister of charity and nurse the stupid wretch through smallpox or some such nice contagious disease, and then die beautifully to the music of distant violins, leaving him to suffer the agonies and remorse of love that came. I read that, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, much too dramatic for me. I'd get over it. Being disappointed in love needn't make a woman a fool. Nor an old maid. There isn't the slightest possibility of Polly being either a fool or an old maid, if I know my Polly. Is there, Francis? I'm afraid I'll have to break up this frolic. It's getting very late, and Polly still teaches in the morning, you know. Thank you for reminding me, Francis. I was forgetting. It was a delightful supper. Thank you for asking us. 
Oh, thank God. He was the host. It was a great honor to be included. May I escort you home, Miss Polly? Thank you, but I came with Tom. Frank? Good night. Good night, Mr. Sidney. Good night, Polly. Good night, Tom. Good night. Good night. Tom, may I have the program from the opera? Oh, certainly. Good night. Good night. Tom, my purse. The key. Oh. Nice you look, dear. Your day for the Ross, isn't it? Give them my love. Of course. Oh, Miss Milne. Yes? Mr. Sidney might call. If he does, you don't know where I am. What's the matter? You two haven't had a spat, have you? No. It's... Well, it's just that I've decided to avoid him. Avoid him? Because he's kind and polite and handsome and well-off and could do more for you than any man you ever met? I know. It wouldn't be easy to turn him down. But I don't think I should see him anymore. Maybe you're right. Smart girls do run away from men and keep right on running away from them until they catch him. Francis is running much faster. Perhaps. But after all, he is nice. Oh, he's awfully nice. Only I... I'd better hurry since we changed the time of the lesson. I may take a walk in the park a little later. It's such a beautiful day. All right, dear. Good afternoon, Mr. Sidney. Good afternoon. Is Miss Polly in? No, she isn't, Mr. Sidney. Miss Polly's been gone over an hour. Well, that's a surprise. Perhaps I can meet her on the way back. Do you know where she went? To one of her pupils. But which pupil? Mr. Sidney, I said she was gone. It would be impossible for me to ask her which pupil. Besides, she's on her way home by now. Through the park. The park? Thank you. She has a green parasol. Miss Polly. Why, Mr. Sidney. Imagine I'm meeting like this here in the park. <laughs> Why imagine it? It's true. Not on a day like this, everybody ought to be in the park. There should be a law. What I meant was I, I hardly ever come through the park anymore. I used to, but, you know, old ways. You're a very progressive girl, Polly. I wonder just how modern your thinking really is. Let's sit down just for a moment. Have you seen Francis lately? No, not since the night of the opera. You see, I'm very progressive, too. She's a wonderfully nice girl. Oh, yes, yeah, she's quite a superior sort of person. Very superior. But not as liberal in her views as you and I. Liberal, Mr. Sidney? You know, uh, I'm going to be out of town for several weeks. Going to New York. Have you ever been to New York? No, I haven't. Oh, it's a wonderful city. Travel. That's the thing for a progressive girl. Mr. Sidney, why don't you marry Francis? Honestly, under that superior air she puts on, there's something very real and honest and fine. And she does love you, I'm sure. Mr. Sidney. Isn't that Tom Shaw coming along? Why, yes. Now, what in the world is he doing here? I had the same thought. Oh, Tom. 
Tom, shouldn't you be at your classes? Oh, hello, Carly. Good afternoon, Mr. Sidney. Tom. Yes, I should be in class. If you'll excuse me, Miss Polly, there's some packing I must attend to. Goodbye, Mr. Sidney. Take care of yourself, Tom. I didn't want to say it in front of him, but I've been expelled. Tom, not really. Why? Oh, I had a row with the night watchman the other night. I was on probation, so now I'm out for good. I hate to think of what the governor will say. It's pretty bad. It's bad, all right. But there could be worse things. Besides, I owe a lot of money Father doesn't know about. How much, Tom? That is a lot of money. But just the same, you've got to tell your father about it. Oh, I couldn't face him with all that. Say, Polly, you and father always got along fine. How about coming up to the house with me and maybe breaking the news to him? Sort of gently paved the way. Tom, a man doesn't send a girl to get him out of trouble. Well, I'm sorry, Polly. I didn't mean it exactly that way. I'll go and see him. But if you don't mind, I, I wish you'd come with me. Just to be there. Of course, I'll go with you. What did he say, Tom? What did he tell you? Tom, what's the matter? He's bankrupt. Not because of the $600. Of course not. It's the Shaw Ironworks and Foundry. They're all gone smashed. But, but how? Bankrupt? When did it happen? It's been happening all along, only he hasn't said anything to us about it. He's been fighting it all alone, all by himself. And the rest of the family have gone on enjoying them as usual. Me especially. I tell you, Polly, I'm no good. I'm just no good. You can't blame them, Tom. Or yourself, either. But you didn't know about it. Maybe it isn't as bad as you think. We haven't anything left. Not anything. Does your mother know? Or the girls? They're upstairs. He hasn't told them yet. But at least I can spare him that much. I'll tell them. What about... I mean, did you get a chance to talk about what happened to you? Oh, sure. He just sat and he rested. All he ever said was, well, son, we both had a little bad luck, but we'll work our way out of it. Tom. I think your father's right. Both of you will work your way out of it. You stay here. I'll go up and tell your mother and the girl. You'll see. Every one of our friends will drop us, just as they did when the Merrick's father failed. I don't believe that, son. Not your real friend. Oh, but Polly, you don't understand how money talks. Looks like Oscar said goodbye. Maud! At a time like this, how could you? Oh! <laughs> and what do you think of my marriage prospects now? They're ruined. Francis, there are happily married people in all walks of life. And a beautiful girl like you could have any man she wants. Oh, Holly, I don't really blame Mr. Sidney for preferring you. But Mr. Sidney doesn't prefer me. I happen to be the only one who seems interested in what he has to say. been a snob, haven't I? I'm sure it hasn't fooled Mr. Sidney. He's in love with a real girl. I know he is. Polly, I've been so silly. Come here. Well, dear, I... I'm oh. sure everything is going to turn out right, Mr. Shaw. Is there any way I can help? Does this mean that we'll have to live in a shack in East Boston? Well, it's not quite as bad as all that. We'll have to leave this house. We'll move to the little place the grandmother left me. Creditors have agreed to that. You'll have to do the housekeeping. Oh. oh, and I'll help with it. I have lots of time, and I'm so anxious to see Grandmother Shaw's old place again. And I'll do all the cooking. Cooking? What can you cook? Fudge. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can stand this terrible existence on the edge of, on the edge of nowhere. Why don't you children just cart me off to the almshouse and be done with it? 
But, Mama, this is wonderful. I love to wash, burn the toast and dust. Stop with that horrible thing. I cannot stand anything that is being swished, especially dust. Yes, Mama. Hello, Francis. Could you use a maid? Oh, Polly, I love you. Maud and I have cleaned the whole house. We've only the kitchen left to do. Tommy, do all poor wives have to do this? I guess so. They should rebel. I will. You could be a spinster. Oh, don't rub it in. Hello, Mrs. Shaw. How are you feeling today? Oh, I guess I'm about as well as could be expected. I'm just waiting for the end. The end, that's all. But they tell me it's only the beginning. They're right. I'm beginning to get hungry. Well, there'll be no food until after we've cleaned the kitchen. Why, front? Then to the kitchen we must go. some milk for a failure. I have. Oh, Tom, didn't you find anything? Nothing but abuse. They think I'm still a jack of names. Don't worry, Tom. You'll find work soon. Well, if he wants work, why doesn't he help us? Aren't we going to bake a cake for a certain occasion? That's right. You're going to help us bake a cake. Oh, no, wait a Here minute. Here you go. Oh, I Tom. promised the governor I'd try Tom. anything, but I don't know about baking oh, a cake. Yes, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you mind if I drink my we'll milk? get everything. No. Right. Well, what'll I do with these? Good one. Mm, looks good. I hear you had a hand in it, son. His hand, his fingers, and his tongue. He licked the whole bowl. I didn't even come in second. Oh, that's probably... Shaw, sure. I'm sure you'd like to try Thomas' birthday cake. I suppose so. But it really doesn't matter. Cake or bread, it's all the same these days. I hope this will give me strength to demand the position tomorrow. Why, good evening, Tris. Good evening, Mrs. Shaw. Good evening, Mrs. Shaw. So nice of you to remember Tom's birthday. Birthday? Oh, yes, of course. Naturally, I remember Tom's birthday. Did you bring a present? Uh, won't you have a seat, Tris? No, thank you, Mr. Shaw. I, I have only a moment. I, I merely stop of Tom. Well, to explain to all of you that under the circumstances, I... and to return this ring. A diamond. We eat again. Well, I think you're being very noble, Trix, and bearing up bravely. I know, Tom. But now that I see what a truly hard time you're having, I, I would only be a handicap to you. Maybe she's right, Tom. You're so understanding, Polly. Well, if it were any use, I'd keep waiting. You wouldn't keep George Farley waiting, would you? George Farley? I saw his carriage outside. Tell me, are his eyes still crossed? My, you're such a clever little girl. You see everything, don't you? That's how I make money. 
Well, if it gives you any satisfaction, George Farley is waiting. This is such a charming little retreat. In fact, I was happy to hear that you have a place at all. Happy birthday. Claire. Congratulations, Tom. That engagement ring was the best birthday present you could possibly get. I guess it was. Maybe I needed something to make me see a lot of things more clearly. Polly, you won't be bothered with my problems anymore. I think I know what I want now and how to get it. Really? Yes. Because from now on, I'm through with women. Oh! <laughs> What a nice surprise. Polly, I wanted to see you about... Oh, I'm sorry. You're busy. It's all right. We're just finishing. You know the Marlins, Thomas. Please sit down. We'll only be a minute. Two minutes. Mr. Shaw. Come, Susan. By the way, Miss Milton, we're all going away for the summer, as usual. But it's Bay. We'll let you know about Susan's lessons in the fall. Thank you, Mrs. Long. Come, dear. Polly, I just had to come and show you. Look, it's almost unbelievable. Mr. Sidney's a real friend, isn't he? He pays my debts in my name and begs me to accept it as a gift. Are you going to? Would you? I asked you. No. I'll pay him back every cent. I only had a job. Wait a minute. Ned us give you a job. In Michigan. Cutting down trees. There's still some left, I'm sure, and it'll be wonderful. You'd be together and not too far away. I mean, well, I I'll write it now. That is, if you're interested. Well, I... I might be. Naturally, it would have to be a definite proposition, facts, figures. After all, business is business. Oh, that reminds me. Polly, I wanted to ask you about this. I'm free now, you see. Do you suppose it would be decent to, to sell it? It's the one I gave Trix. Yes. Yes, I guess it would be. Well, I'll be going along. Oh, is Mr. Tibby's letter. Thanks. Now, there's a man who deserves everything he's got. And he's going to get everything he deserves. Yes, he's a fine person. All right. So are you. And don't you ever forget it. Polly, this talk has done me a world of good. It's just like the talks I used to have with Grandmother. Thanks, Polly. Only more so. I know it's going to break down before you get to Lincoln. It'll be better to spend the summer at home, even if it is a little rough getting there. Oh, my dear. I'm going to miss you. I'll keep your room intact for you until you get back in September. Thank you for everything, Miss Moore. You've been a wonderful friend. Right over. Well? 
You don't look as though you've been on a vacation. I'm all right. No, you're not. Polly. Are you, by any chance, still in love with Mr. Sidney? Mr. Sidney? Of course not. Are you sure? Quite sure. I was never in love with him. Oh, but Polly, I thought... But there's someone. There is? Do I know him? You've seen him. And he's attentive and thoughtful and rich and... No. No? Well, then why do you... All I know is I care. And he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Now, let's talk about something else. All right, we'll talk about something else. Oh, we got a letter from Tom today. From Tom? You did? Did you? Yes. This is his latest photograph. He's doing very well, you know. Ned made him a partner. Of course, the picture's terrible. He looks like a desperado, doesn't he? Tom never was exactly handsome, but... Polly. Huh. But I'd better forget all about it. There's another woman. Marcia Bailey, that Westerner. Well, really, somebody should talk to Tom. If you ever breathe one word, or even hint. All right. I won't. <laughs> says you only need this today. Come in. Polly. Polly, darling. You're better. Much. Only one pill a day. Pink. Good. Dr. Sears says you'll be up and around in two weeks. That's right. She'll be as good as new for Christmas. I must tell you something. I simply must. Somebody is engaged. Francis, you don't need... No, no, not Tom. Me. He said it was my chin which I held up and my snobbery which I dropped. But you know what I really think it is? He loves the way I sweep the floor. <laughs> now for my second surprise. I'm really not supposed to tell you, but... Well, Tom is coming home for Christmas. Tommy? Polly, this letter just came for you. It's from Brother Ned. Well, I must run. There's a lot of shopping to be done. I have to get my trousseau. Trousseau. French is such a beautiful language. Well, goodbye. 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 Well, what does he say? How are things? Well, Ned's doing fine. And so is Tom. He says... Oh. What's the matter? Tom says Marcia is a wonderful girl. I guess there'll be a wedding by Christmas. Oh, my dear. So, he'll bring her here for Christmas. But I don't care. There's so much work to be done. I won't ever think about it. I won't. Well, my dear family, I've waited for the coffee to tell you a bit of news. I could stand some. What with veal at seven cents a pound, and coffee at five. Oh, every sip is poison. I have an antidote. I believe I'm solvent here. Yeah. The foundry has been awarded a contract to supply the iron plates for 12 ships of the new packet line, provided I supervise. Oh, Father, then you mean things will be as they used to be? 
we have to be wealthy again in that old house? We shall firm back on a sound basis. And net us a tidy profit besides. The odd thing is, I have no idea how we got the order. But miracles do happen. Edward, does this mean that we can belong again? We have always belonged, Anastasia. And that I can give my parties again? We leave in the morning. Francis, pack my things. Maud, get to the laundry and find those uh, gold and purple monogram sheets. We're going back to civilization again. Now, now, take it easy, Anastasia. You have to stay on here for a while. We'll go on living just as we have until we are solidly back on our feet. Never mind our feet. Just so we're solidly back in the bank. God bless you, merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's flock when we were born astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Beautiful Christmas surprise. And all the lovely gifts. Thank heaven we can afford to buy gifts again. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Here are some presents for your young ladies. The carriage downstairs is loaded with more. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Thank you so much, Mr. Shaw. And as for you, young man, my attorneys inform me that you are the owner of the new iron steamship packet line thanks to which I'm in business again. I consider myself very lucky to have a future son-in-law who believes in American progress and 15-story buildings, and particularly iron ships. No need to thank me, sir. It was good business. I needed the iron plates, and you had the plan. And I received some good advice. Timber! Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Tom. Well, Merry Christmas, Tom. Hello, son. But, Tom, where's your marshal? My Marsha? Well, you're a little mixed up, aren't you? Ned's Marsha. They're being married today in Michigan. I'm supposed to bring you that message. Polly! These are for you. Let's see, what's all this? Hello, Tom. Oh, it's nothing. I'm all well again. Ned's Marsha, but you were getting married. Well, you're right, I am. If I can persuade Polly to have me. I just loved you, Polly. I still do. If you'll have me... Oh, Tom, please. You shouldn't propose right here in front of everybody. Oh, yes, I should. There's something else I should do, too. You know what? Get a shave. <laughs> oh, my dear. 